Hi, everybody. It's Susan Gerbic. I have a story to tell you. I, gosh, I have a zillion stories I could tell you, but I'm going to try to explain something tonight that's a little, hopefully it's not too involved. Um, I've had this channel about a month. And I hope that you have been watching the videos and hopefully even reading a lot of the articles that I've published over the years. And so you have a little more background. To be clear, it's really difficult to explain everything about mediumship, even a small percentage, a small percentage of what happens in mediumship when I'm just trying to show a video to you and keep it to a reasonable length. So please go back to the other videos or ask questions in the comments. I'll be happy to try to answer them for you. So what I'm going to show you today is there is a very small amount of time than the psychic medium, Thomas John was had a residency in um, at Caesar's palace, the Cleopatra room, Cleopatra barge in Las Vegas. And he was there from January, I think 15th to March, I believe it was March something in 2020. As you all know, we had a pandemic and everything closed. Thomas John did not predict anything to have to do with COVID. In fact, he was pushing, you know, everybody to get their seats and reserve their seat up until July. He was saying, oh, don't worry, you know, get your seat. And then next thing we know, it's closed. But that's a whole different story. Okay. Thomas John is hot reads his people who attend his shows, um, people who get readings from him. We know this. We, we've documented it. I've got Article after article, we've caught him in multiple stings. Now, let's see how I can explain this reasonably. So during the time Thomas John has had his residency in January of 2020, we didn't know there was going to be a pandemic either and that everything would close down. So we had um, been watching very closely what was going on with the Thomas John experience that was held there. And we were wondering how he was going to be able to hot read a room uh, when you've got, a, I think, almost 200 seats that you can, that are available. I think he had it six days a week, two nights on Sunday, two times on Sunday and, you know, the rest of the week. So what he would do is every night or every day, he would put up a post on Facebook and say, hey, it's me, Thomas John. I'm going to be at um, Caesars tonight. And who is going to be there? And he, he would put these posts out and people would write in and they would say, me, I'll be there. Or they would write, I'll be there on Friday. It's my birthday. Or I'll be, you know, showing up tomorrow. Or And I'm so excited. And when they make these posts on his Facebook page, then what it does is it's this, Facebook account is right there with their name and everything. And so what Thomas John can do is just click on their Facebook account and he can go through and look at the photos and try to find out if there's somebody who's got um, some kind of grief or, you know, something that they could, that he could find that he could use to relate back to them during the event and just claim it came from the dead. Okay. We know this is happening. I have multiple screenshots of him asking for who's going to be at my show tonight and people saying, I'll be there. And then when um, members of my team would attend the event, um, we could even predict kind of, oh, I bet it, I bet this person is going to get her, her reading tonight. And I bet he's going to talk about the dog and he's going to talk about her mom. And, you know, and then the, sure enough, we would find out that he, that person would get read and those things would be mentioned. If we can find it on their Facebook page, well, then Thomas John can find it on their Facebook page. It's not that hard. In fact, it's extremely easy. But what we wanted to know is, does Ticketmaster, because that's who had the tickets, does Ticketmaster give him a seating chart? Like who bought the tickets and where are they seating? And when we went through Ticketmaster, we went and looked at the instructions and let me show you what we found that they say. Okay, so this is what we got from the Ticketmaster website from where he people were buying the tickets. Um, hopefully that's not too blurry for you to read. 
and it says, we will share information with our business partners. This includes a third party who provides an event such, such as the artist, promoter, or team, or sponsors an event, or who operates a venue where we hold events. So that's the little section that talks about Ticketmaster will share information that be like who's sitting where or who's at the event. They will share it, whether he gets it or not. I don't know. And I don't know how much detail they get, but they do have some information. So that's what that says. What I and my team were doing throughout his um, tenure at the at the Caesars um, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas is several times a day we would go and watch the ticket sales and we would take screenshots of what was happening on Ticketmaster. The blue areas, the little dots that you'll see are where there's a seat still available. And what we could do is we could see where people would be sitting and so on. This is January 26th at three o'clock on a Sunday. And then we would go through and just pick out the different dates where we wanted, we wanted, um, uh, to look at and we were following a trend we had a giant spreadsheet we were keeping track of all this so this is one day in particular and the note on here says it was the screenshot taken 10 minutes before the start of the event so at 5 50 p.m we can see that here's the stage where thomas john would usually stay and what he would do is he would come down well he would be on the stage and he had a woman who was like the host and she did the narrating and she she told him when it was getting close to taking a break and that kind of thing and you know introducing him she was a person who um, was hired to you know be the person walking around with a microphone she would go up to the person who who thomas john was calling on and she'd give them the microphone and they would talk and and that's how what her role was but thomas john would come off the stage sometimes and he'd wander around um the the room now i've been here before and you know it's you know there are tables and you can sit and you can have your drink and there's waiters and things wandering around but all the areas that are blue are not filled in yet so if ticket master, if ticket master is telling giving that information to thomas john like so and so bought a seat then he knows where they're sitting and he can and since he's already read their Facebook page, well, then he generally knows where he's going to be getting the reading from. So if he's trying to, if he's got in, information about somebody named Mary Smith, who's going to be at the event and she's sitting in her seats over here and he knows that she has a dog that recently passed and the dog's name is Sandy. Well, then Thomas John will come down and he'll say, I'm getting a feeling about an animal over here. And it has like a, like, a, is it like a Cindy or a Sandy? Oh, and he'll, he'll kind of wander over into this area and he'll say, I'm getting the reading from like, he's like, as if he's, he's, a, a, you know, metal detector or something. I don't know what I would call it, but he wandering around. So this is what he would do. And that's part of his show. That's how he does his thing. And so he wanders around and he's looking for people. Now, if he already knows where they're sitting and he already knows what he's going to tell them because he's already researched them ahead of time, then it's just an act. It's just part of his stick, you know, where I'm getting something from over in this area, you know, that kind of thing. And it feels really realistic if you're there. You know, if you're sitting in the audience and you're listening and watching what's going on, you don't know where he's going to head off in. But it's really interesting. So do we have any evidence that Thomas John... Uh, not only, well, we know he's hot reading because we've got multiple, multiple recordings of him hot reading, um, but does he know where the person's sitting? And I'm going to let you listen to some audio here. Hold on just a second and let's get that up for you so you can hear it. Okay, so what I'm going to play for you is a little snippet of, of audio and let's hope it's, it's, you can hear it, but you know, it's kind of awkward to, to listen to these things, but let's see what we can, what we can hear. So listen to what he's saying. He's wandering out and he's trying to find a woman who has a Joe from New York City who I think he says it's not her husband, but it's like somebody in her family turns out to be her father-in-law and um, that he's trying to get this, this personality that's in this area. So he's like over on this area, he's really concentrating on this area. And I guess there's some other people in that area that have a New York connection, but 
He's looking for a specific woman because he already knows. He's already hot read her. He knows she'd be sitting, she should be sitting in that area. So listen to what happens here. Are you married? No. I'm looking for somebody's, either somebody's in-laws or something. Um, let me just keep going here. Yeah. Somebody down there, maybe? <coughs> and I'm hearing the name Joe. What do you have, dear? Hi, my husband's here, and his, his my father-in-law is Joe from New York. From New York, from okay, New York. okay. Um, what is your name, sweetheart? Diane. Diane. Okay. Now, did you know this man? Yes. It's okay. My father-in-law. Okay, your father-in-law. Okay. And there was a New York City connection. Yes. Okay. But then I think for like I said, some sometimes I'll go direct to people. I just knew I was in the back, so for some reason I felt I was back over there, but the fact that you're kind of far away too is, is fine. I just knew I wasn't in this section. Um, I was like, in the back, I changed my seat. Oh. <laughs> oh, your dead people were not aware of that, so they're still sitting back there. They found the other New Yorkers and they were hanging out. So, um, <clears throat> so as I connect with your father-in-law, hold on one second. Yeah. I, Funny, huh? So what he's doing is he's wandering around. He's trying to find this woman who is, he already knows where she should be sitting. He already knows um, who her person is that he's trying to get a hold of. It's a Joe in New York City. It's her father-in-law. And he's wandering around. He's kind of frustrated because he can't find this woman. And he, he's, he's like, well, I don't know where this woman is, you know, and he gets a, he gets a, somebody from the other side of the, of the event on the other side. And she says, well, I have, you know, I have a Joe from New York city. And he's like, oh, and he goes over to her and he says, as you heard, really? Well, I, you know, sometimes I go directly to a person, but for some reason I was thinking you're over on the other side. She goes, I was sitting there. That was my seat, but I moved my seat to the other side. And then he plays it off really smooth, very smooth. He says, oh, ha ha, your dead didn't know that. In fact, they were hanging out with those other New Yorkers on the other side and everybody laughs. Okay, but what was going on here is he was caught in knowing where that woman's seat was and he just played it off like, Oh, ha ha. Like, what do you mean your dead thinks you're sitting on the other side? Does that even make any sense? Your dead thinks that you're over here because that's where your seat ticket was, but you moved to the other side where your seat ticket was not and sudden, and your dead stayed in that area and it didn't follow you to the other side. I mean, that makes zero sense. And the idea that the dead is hanging out with the other New Yorkers on the other side of the room. I mean, the whole, the whole premise is silly. The idea, well, the whole premise of mediumship is silly. But the thing is, he's saying, he's giving it away. That he's, he knows where the woman's seat is. And he's trying to find her in that seat because he knows he's supposed to go to this woman at this time and do this reading on her about a Joe in New York City and it's her father-in-law and she says hey I'm over here and come over to and he's like oh I didn't know I mean it's as clear as a bell okay let me show you one more thing just one more thing okay I'm lying there's a few more things let me show you this so these are some screenshots that um we have lots of these screenshots and I've blurred out the person's names but what Thomas John would say is who's going to be at my show and people like this Sheila person would say I hope to see you on my birthday February 14th so she's getting tickets there for the 14th of of, of um, February and that then he could go to her Facebook page you just click on her name and there's her Facebook page and then you could just go through it and read it and he could just keep track 
oh, on the 14th, Sheila's going to be, oh, where is she sitting? And, you know, he could find where she's sitting and he'd say, okay, we're going to talk to her about a graduation, um, a mother-in-law who died of breast cancer and her sister Elizabeth is struggling in school. Boom, 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 boom. You know, that's, he writes it down, goes to the next person. It's really simple. Let me show you a couple more really quick. Here's another person, Louisa, L-Y-S-S-A. Yes, I can't wait to see you Thursday and hoping our loved ones have some messages for us. Again, it's very easy for him to click on the person's name and he knows exactly who it is who's going to be reading that night. And here's another one, Mary Lou. Yes, on the 16th of January. Yay. And then he could just go through and he, he you know, jots through their Facebook pages and he's able to get some information and he'll know, again, he'll know where they're sitting. He already knows what, maybe three items. You really don't need much more than three items to do a couple minute reading on somebody. You just can go through their Facebook page very quickly and find it. And again, if these people didn't have anything on Facebook, well, we know they're on Facebook. They're posting on Facebook. So of course they're, <laughs> of course they're, of course they have Facebook. They're posting on Facebook. So if, if he if he didn't find anything good, well, then why are they going to a medium? Probably there's not much information, but there's got to be something. It could be as simple as um, I'm getting the something about you being from Connecticut, you know, and, and then move on to the next person. And all he got was something about, yeah, it's not very clear, but I'm getting something about Connecticut. Just whatever's on their Facebook page. It could be anything. Like that other woman said she was going to see him on her birthday. So you know, that's not hard to, I, I feel that the month of February is very important to you. I think it's a birthday that's happening. There you go. He's got a hit on her. It just needs two or three things. But I have one more thing from something that was sent to me a long, well, not a long time ago, but a few years ago, but I find it really interesting. And it fits with this, with this whole thing I'm telling you about knowing where the people are ahead of time. Now, hold on. Okay, so I'm just going to play you this audio because the video is just not really all that great quality. But what it is, is like 13 seconds long. And somebody sent me their their reading. They said, here's my reading. You know, can you look at it and, and analyze it or whatever? And, you know, I did that with her totally private. I didn't release it to anywhere. And it was just between her and I. And I do that all the time. If you guys want me to do that, please send me your, your um, audio or your video, um, you can send it to Susan Gerbic at yahoo.com or gmail.com, or you can send it to me through Facebook Messenger. Um, and by the way, if you're enjoying these videos, I know this one's a little more complicated, a little longer than normal. Please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me that if, if you do, and please give me all, all the comments and feedback you feel like giving me. Um, but um, so this audio, I'm going to play for you. This was sent to me, as I said, by a woman who wanted me to analyze her reading. And she ends it. So it's being recorded from the back of the room, the reading she's receiving. And I'm not playing that. But right before she ends the video, turns it off, there's this 13 second little thing I'm going to I'm going to play for you that she hadn't noticed. And I just accidentally noticed. I said, what's this? Now, listen to what he, what's happening here. We're taking a 10 minute break, guys, but um, and then we'll come back. When you come back, the only thing I ask is just to please um, sit in the seats that you were in. Thank you. Thank you. So what was that all about? Why would he why would he tell people we're gonna take a break, a small break? It's a room of people, maybe well from the video, like I said, you're just getting the back of people's heads. So there's we can see maybe 20 people or so, but there's probably more. It's, it's shot um, um, portrait. So we don't know how many people are there in the audience. It might be wider, but he's up on a stage. You can barely see him. And why would he tell people that? Why would he say, the, we're going to take a, a break, but I want to make sure you stay in the seats that you were in. Don't change your seats. Now, why would he say that? Why would that be important? Why wouldn't he say like, you know, we're going to take a 10 minute break. It's a good chance to stretch and get your energy back up and, and uh, maybe grab something to drink or, you know, make sure you leave your refreshments outside, depending on where the venue is, or, um, 
you know, we're going to have a group in the back that's going to have a quick prayer or, um, you know, why don't you meditate? So hopefully your, your loved one will come through, really consider who it is that you want to talk to, pull out a picture of the person you really want to have contact with. I mean, something like that would make a little sense, but it doesn't make a lot of sense that make sure you do not change your seats. The only reason really you would do that is because you know where the person is sitting that you're going to be reading the next five people or whatever it is after break, he's going to be reading. He knows where they're sitting because he knows their tickets and he knows this is not Caesars that I'm talking about. This is a completely different venue. I'm sorry. I didn't make that clear. This is some other venue way before Caesars. Um, I'm not even sure what year it is, 2017 or something like that. So this is a completely different situation. He's in an audience with the stage in front of him. And he's telling the people, we're going to take a quick break. When you come back from your break, sit in the seats that you were in. Don't move. Don't change seats. Sit in the seats you were in. I mean, is it like Oprah? He's going to give out tickets to, you get a car, you get a car. <laughs> Look underneath your seat. No, not like that at all. So fascinating. I have um, <laughs> I have so many of these, you guys. Let me show you, because I'm, I guess you're probably a little curious. Let me go back and show you a screenshot or two of Thomas um, posting on Facebook, in case you don't believe me, saying, hey, who's going to be at my show tonight? Let me show you what it looks like. Hold on, just, I'll pull that up for you. I have so many of these, you guys, that it takes me a while to look for which ones I want to show you. But there's just so many here. Uh, January 16th, 2020 opening night tonight in Las Vegas. See you there. 6 p.m. 149 comments. And in those 149 comments, there's you know 10, 15 people who are saying I'll be there. You know, <laughs> really easy. Here's another one. See you tonight. Las Vegas, January 17th. 23 comments. Here's another one. Another show tonight in Las Vegas. See you there at 6 p.m. This is January 18th. And then 21 comments. So again, people will just go through and they'll say, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. Or I'll be there Friday. Or I'll be there on my birthday on the 12th. Uh, I'm, I'm bringing my sister. There was one that we have. Oh, my gosh. He says, uh, she says, I won't be there tonight, Thomas. But my sister Vicky will be there and she tags her sister Vicky. So what we're able to do is go to Vicky's Facebook page and we can see what's going on with Vicky. And then of course, when we go into the event, we can see that Vicky gets a reading and Vicky's reading is exactly what's on her Facebook page. And um oh my gosh, this just just the show, the Caesar show for three months was exhausting for myself and my team. I, I'm working on a book. It's called Grief Vampire. It's mostly done. I'm, I'm at the stages where I'm really doing the fussy parts of it now and making sure I have citations and stuff. I'm uploading a lot of things to the Wayback Machine so people can look at it. You know, I know it's a print book, but they'll be able to look at the URLs that will be in, in the book as citations and things. Because everything that we do, everything I do, has some sort of citation to it. There's there's not um some of it might be my opinion but if it is my opinion it says in my experience or my opinion but all these other things are all factual and um so in this book that we're that i'm working on this chapter that i have about his time in caesar's palace I spent days and days and days trying to decide what to put in there because there's so much I have, so much content. And you just get caught up in in um, the stories because we can hear the recording, you know, I hear the recording and I say, I wonder which person that is. And then you look at the Facebook pages of who says they're going to be there that day because we've got screenshots of everything. And you're like, okay, well, that person matches up with this person. This person matches up with that reading. And you go through and it, at a certain point, you're saying to yourself, are any of these readings cold? Or is every single reading he's doing somebody he he has pre-read? And, you know, 
I'm a human being. I don't have that much time to be doing all of that kind of research. And I have team members who have lives. So I can't ask them to do that. But at a certain point, it's it's just like, what in the world? I can't have this chapter about this time he's in at Caesars to go on for, you know, 50 pages. I got to, I got to sum it all up. And it's, there's so much. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, thank you all for uh, paying attention, staying with me. This story was a little more complicated, if, especially if you don't have a lot of background on who Thomas John is or how mediumship works. Um, but, um, you know, please leave your comments. Um, I'm happy to respond if you are, you know, asking a legitimate question. I'm constantly seeing comments from people who it doesn't look like they watch the video, but they are sure as heck want to leave a comment <laughs> about something. And it's just, it's, wow. It's like, well, if you'd watch the video, maybe you would have the answer to your comment. And then they'll say, I'm not going to watch the video. <laughs> I'm like, well, why are you wasting your time? And why are you wasting my time? I don't get it. But anyway, you all, if you like this, please subscribe and hit the little notification bell that goes ding so that it, you know that I will, I'll know to, um, you know, when I upload another one of these videos. So have a terrific day. Thanks all.